Judge Cloud Frollo, a sinister lecher oozing with cruelty and self-righteousness. His quiet, menacing voice invokes nauseating reactions as he harasses the gypsy Esmeralda. But who graced this character with such a villainous voice? Let's find out. Tony Jay was born in London, England in 1933. Hmm. London. You know, I never heard of that before. Sounds fake. He attended Pinner County Grammar School and completed his national service with the Royal Air Force in 1953. Later, Jay recalled, I was always an actor at school. He opted for the real estate business's financial security and moved to South Africa in 1966 after hearing of the potential there for his line of work. At the age of 33, within three months of relocating to South Africa, Jay acted in radio dramas most notably a detective series, Sounds of Darkness, where he played a savvy but blind FBI agent. This experience led him to decide to take up acting professionally. While in South Africa, Jay acted, wrote, and directed radio plays on Springbok Radio, the South African Broadcasting Corporation's first commercial radio station. He was primarily associated with the comic series Taxi. He not only portrayed New York cabbie Red Kowalski, not to be mistaken for Mike Wazowski, he also co-wrote many scripts. Please, Chuck. A creative artiste has enough trouble without you. Since when did you have a camera? Since I bought one today so as I could take my little photo in a bikini. Oh. Now, if you don't mind, Chuck, you was throwing a shadow. That's a habit I developed when I was bored, throwing a shadow. What must I do, fade away? I'll just stand over there a little, huh? Oh, go in the bedroom. You make me nervous. Oh, so I make you nervous. It's okay that you stand in front of this Polak joint wearing nothing but a coy expression. I am wearing a bikini. Yeah, well, looking at you from the side, you could have fooled me. What do you mean by that, crack? I mean that from the side, you looks like... Yeah, yeah, well, never mind. I, I don't want to get personal. Just one thing I would like to know. What are you supposed to be? Me? Yeah, you. I am the foot... The... 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 Uh, the... Uh, uh, the... Uh, I, I am the guy that takes the photo. So why are you also wearing a bikini? Well, you see, Chuck, I, I got a bit confused. Uh, you told me there had to be a photo of Myrtle taken in a bikini. So? So I wasn't sure whether there was a photo of Myrtle in a bikini or a photo of Myrtle taken in a bikini. So, since I was going to take the photo, I wasn't sure whether I had to wear the bikini or Myrtle. Oh, boy. Jay also adapted, cast, and directed the first six months of episodes for The Avengers. Again, not to be mistaken for those Avengers. Based on seasons four through six of the 1960s British television series of the same name, the series was broadcast on Springbok from the 6th of December, 1971, to the 28th of December, 1973. To bridge the gap between the British television series' visual orientation and the sound-only perspective of radio, Jay created a narrator, which he imbued with irony and skepticism. Now, from the makers of Coldwater Omo, the cliff top was bleak, deserted, and windswept, although it was a sunny day. The Carmaddock Research Establishment rested in a small valley. It was well protected by high walls and barbed wire, and surrounded by clumps of undergrowth. From this undergrowth, there stumbled a tall, spare, bespectacled young man. <laughs> He appeared to be almost exhausted. He stumbled and stopped. He took his spectacles off to wipe them. The sunlight flashed onto them. The flare of light reflected into his eyes. And a voice said, Guthrie! Guthrie! Can you hear me? Can you hear me, Guthrie? Guthrie wheeled round. There was no one there. No one at all. In 1973, Jay returned to England. Again, that sounds fake, but he went back to England, where he worked in various television productions. For the BBC series Fall of Eagles, he portrayed Tsar Alexander III of Russia, during which time he met Patrick Stewart, who played Vladimir Lenin. During this period, he was cast as Vladimir Maximovich in Woody Allen's Love and Death, which was shot in Hungary and France. George Lucas met with Jay about playing Obi-Wan Kenobi in a planned film with the working title Galactic Warfare. Despite Jay agreeing to the role, Lucas decided to cast Alex Guinness instead. That's okay. I mean, a lot of people don't even know what Star Wars is now. Stam Wars? Am I, am I saying that right? Anyway, 
On stage, he had small roles in many plays. He was most notably cast as Vincent Crummels in the Royal Shakespeare Company's eight-and-a-half-hour-long production of The Life and Adventures of Nicholas Nickleby at Stratford-upon-Avon. After a tour of England, Nicholas Nickleby embarked on a limited tour of the United States. Jay recalls in a 1986 The New York Times interview, Even before I left England, I told friends I'd be staying if I got the chance. During its run, Jay's performance was described as brilliantly played by the New York Times. Consequently, he was nominated for the 1987 Drama Desk Award as Outstanding Featured Actor in a Play. Jay's acting drew the attention of an agent who arranged for him to return from England to the United States for an audition. Jay was cast in a pilot program called Circus, which was unsuccessful. On set, Jay met makeup artist Kathy Rogers, who would become his second wife. In 1986, he moved to the United States, where he became a resident. Jay's many roles on television include Laszlo in The Golden Girls and Lex Luthor's villainous aide-de-camp, Nigel St. John. He is mostly known, however, for his voiceover work. Jay started his work with Disney when he was cast as Monsieur de Arqui, the immoral asylum superintendent in Beauty and the Beast. So you want me to throw her father into the asylum unless she agrees to marry you? Oh, that is despicable. <laughs> I love it! When it came time to cast The Hunchback of Notre Dame, directors Gary Trouseldale and Kirk Wise had a hard time pinning down a voice for Judge Cloud Frollo. Initially, they offered the role to Anthony Hopkins, but he ended up turning it down. They also offered it to Jack Nicholson. However, he asked for too much money. So they looked elsewhere to cast the role. Patrick Stewart, Derek Jacoby, and Ian McKellen were all considered, but Jay's previous work on Beauty and the Beast impressed the directors, and the role was given to him. Claude Frollo, well now, he's um, a religious zealot. We've tried to make him into a, a fully fleshed, three-dimensional character, a tragic figure rather than uh, an out-and-out -out senseless villain. In other words, everything he does in a wicked sense is understandable but not excusable. See, Frollo, when he's trying to get his own way, tends to be arch. <laughs> That's the way I see him. In other words, you could see through him, really. Because nobody trusts him. I mean, Phoebus doesn't trust him right from the word go. And Esmeralda certainly doesn't. And Quasimodo certainly knows about him. So, whatever he's trying to do, Frollo, in, 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 in an attempt to get his own way and get his ambitions realized, is really transparent. We can see through him. But that doesn't stop his own fervor, you see. Ah, so this is the gallant Captain Phoebus, home from the wars. Reporting for duty, as ordered, sir. Your service record precedes you, Phoebus. I expect nothing but the best from a war hero of your caliber. And you shall have it, sir. I guarantee it. Yes. You know, my last Captain of the Guard was, um, a bit of a disappointment to me. Well, no matter. I'm sure you'll whip my men into shape. Uh, thank you. It's a great trim, uh, Tremendous honor, sir. Tony Jay's deep and menacing portrayal of Frollo exemplifies his talent for performing intimidating villains. His contribution, however, gives life to a unique Disney villain who is a bit more complex in his ambitions. Frollo looks for power through the church and retribution for his lust for Esmeralda. Tony's calm and cold baritone voice accents this ambition and gives it a chilling lair. His performance during the song Hellfire especially sends chills through spines. After Hunchback, Jay performed in various animated projects. He took over the voice of Sher Khan, which actor George Sanders had originated for the 1967 Disney animated film The Jungle Book. In 11 episodes, Jay voiced Sher Khan for Disney's animated TV series Tailspin. He also performed Khan in House of Mouse and the 2003 film The Jungle Book 2. Outside of Disney, Jay supplied the voice for the virus Megabyte in the computer animated television show Reboot. Megaframe. My domain. He was the voice of the alien warlord Lord Dreg, the villain during the last two seasons of the original 1987 Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles animated TV series. There isn't much time. Join me and we'll stop the turtles together. Then rule the planet! He is also well known among fans of the video game series Legacy of Cain for his voicing of the original Mortanius and the Elder God. So, you have come out into the open at last. The binding must be fragile indeed. But you will find you are too late. 
Jay was also a devotee of classic Broadway and made several recordings and performances of old-time Broadway lyrics in spoken word form. A CD of these readings, Speaking of Broadway, was released in 2005. In April of 2006, Jay underwent surgery to remove a non-cancerous tumor from his lungs. Sadly, afterwards, he became critically ill and was readmitted to Cedar sinai where he died on the 13th of August, 2006, at the age of 73. In the U.S., Tony Jay was best known for giving life to various cartoon and video game characters, but his work in radio and the Royal Shakespeare Company is just as impressive. Jay's dark and rich performance as Frollo flung us into the mind of a lustful and sinister lecher, and carries on his legacy for decades to come. Also to hate ants! One by one. Thank you for watching this episode of Dizographies. Click the thumbs up button below if you liked it, and if you want to be notified when the next episode comes out, consider subscribing. Comment below with characters you would like to see us cover. Further reading and references are linked in the description. We hope to see you in another Dizography.